Hyde Park Corner in London is where a man can speak his mind on any subject in this world. But what brought me here was an old man whose subject had nothing to do with this world. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have come to Hyde Park today to confess to the crime of murder. Any member of my audience is perfectly at liberty to report to the police every word which I say. The facts are at my fingertips, the places, the times, the people involved. He just talks I like that? Whether anyone's listening or not, of what can everybody in London's heard the judge's story a thousand and one times. Besides, he thinks there's a crowd of 300 people clustered around him, hanging on to every word. So he just goes on with his confession. Confess? No man escapes judgment. Do you know he really was a judge once? Or was a going to be? He had one of the finest legal minds of them all. Perhaps Spent his whole life helping the underdog murder. in the court. And he just went to pieces overnight. Not Why? He was haunted, you might say. Particularly since I have in my possession a most damning piece of evidence. Piece of evidence. I was a barrister, so I think you'll agree that I have some knowledge of judicial procedure. Excellent. In a word, excellent. Top draw, my boy. As devastating a closing argument as I've ever read. A summation worthy of, the, of me. Thank you, sir. When you read that in court tomorrow, you'll put a rope around that scoundrel's throat. A conviction without a corpus delicti. That happens twice in a hundred years. Only twice, mark you. I had some pretty powerful circumstantial evidence. For no cadaver, my boy. No cadaver. It was a gloomy day for me when they assigned the office with this one. I'll tell you what I said. I'll let you into a secret. I told our chief clerk, oh, all right then. Let Lawrence handle it. Lawrence can sink with it. And Lawrence turns out to be a cracking genius. Now tell the chief clerk to make a copy of this, and I want everybody in the office to read it. Everybody! Top draw, my boy! Top draw! The old man lets himself go, but he's never wrong. Not bad, Mr. Lawrence. You may still call me Harvey for another couple of days. No, not likely, sir. One must have the proper respect for a rising star. In fact, the toast is in order. Careful, Bill. Oh, everyone's gone. No, not for me. I've got some work to do. <laughs> Success keeps you warm, eh? Well, let's hear it. Mm -hmm. Let's hear this ruddy work of genius. Well, I must admit I'd like you to hear it for suggestion. May it please your lordship and gentlemen of the jury, the prisoner in the dock, Frank Malone, is charged by the Crown with the murder of his wife, Sarah. His defense can be summed up in a single phrase. If indeed Frank Malone murdered his wife, where is her body? Once that which is right can be thwarted by that which is merely clever. The lights by which we live begin to lose their brilliance. Now, gentlemen of the jury, I have fulfilled my responsibility. You must fulfill yours. <laughs> I'm afraid the office is closed. Who are you? But since you asked me, I'll tell you. But you won't like it. I'm Sarah. I'm the dead lady. Only I'm not as dead as that. I don't believe it. Want to listen to my art? Oh, that Frankie's a bad one. 
done enough harm for ten men. But he didn't murder his Sarah, because I'm here. There were bloodstains all over the flat and all over him. They beat me up all right, good and proper. Half killed me. Uh, but he was as tight as an owl. But he's done it before, sober too. So this time I was mad. Right, Frankie, you clot, I thought. This time you've done it. I'm off. Why, sir, double seven three. My, don't he look pale and haggard? Let me speak to Inspector Clark, please. Oh, well, when you contact him, ask him to ring Mr. Harvey Lawrence at the office. It's very important. What are you going to do about it, eh? You'll have to sign a statement and appear in court tomorrow. Not likely, love. Why not? What do you think Frankie would do if he got hold of me? After I'd let him go through all this lot. You'd have a real murder on your hands. Bye. Wait. How do I know you're his wife? What? You might be a girlfriend. Or somebody paid by Malone's friends. Shadow of a doubt, and the jury brings in a verdict of not guilty. Well, you got the police description? Can I fit it? Yes, got your description here. Five foot three, blue eyes, 35. 29, if you don't mind. Red hair. Well? Well, it could fit a thousand women. If you want to save him, you'll have to testify. Yeah. You're bound and determined to make him swing, aren't you? I'm certain he killed his wife. I'm his wife. I'm Sarah. I don't care what these blinking papers say. Look, I'll tell you something. He had a pet name for me. Something he used to call me when it was all right between us. Only him and me knows it. Ask him. Ask him when he's not expecting it. Catch him unawares. It was... Don't laugh. It, it was Ginger. What sort of evidence is that? Well, you said yourself it only needed a shadow of a doubt. Now, look, it's not as if it was his own counsel who's trying to save him. But it's you who wants him to hang. Now, that'll make the jury think twice. You know I'm Sarah, don't you? No. I know no such thing. Look. Look. Here's something I recognize. Here's a complaint I signed against him last year, when he beat me up good and proper. I was in the hospital three weeks. Sir? Well, I signed it, didn't I? Same handwriting. Isn't that the same handwriting? Tell Frankie not to look for me, because I'll be far away. And tell him, tell him I should have let him hang. Inspector, I, I just wanted to check over one or two points for tomorrow. Yes. Oh, yes, tomorrow is my big day, all right. I can produce competent and reliable witnesses to prove that on this 
very day, I was on my way to a tailor's shop in Temple Lane to pick up my robes before taking the oath of office. Oh. We are, sir. I think I'll get away with it. The Lord Chief Justice himself doesn't look one jot better, sir. I'm the last person to sit in judgment on my fellow man. If I may say so, sir, there isn't a person who won't be happy for you today. A gentleman who's spent his life defending poor people who are down on their luck. What time are you to be sworn in, sir? 2.30 this afternoon. I'm not entirely satisfied with the collar. It hangs somewhat awkward. A pin here and here will make... Oh, well. What's this? Hmm. Is this the way you send out your bills? It's a bit sneaky. I'll have a devil of a job trying to pay you before the end of the month, I'm afraid. I am Sarah Malone. Now, how in heaven's name did that get in there? <laughs> One of our seamstresses has got a bit of a cheek, eh, sir? Private calling card, you might say. You don't have any, Sarah Malone. Now, then, a fraction of an inch will make all the difference in the world, so you'll see. I'm Sarah. I'm the dead lady. The car's here. Your lordship. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's a limousine to drive you to the Lord Chamberlain's office. You can see it down there by the curb. Isn't it a smasher? What is it, sir? You look so sad. Anyone would think you were burying your best friend today instead of becoming a high mighty judge. I suppose an occasion like this does make one feel rather moody. You get into the car. I'll bring everything down. Oh, I mustn't forget the Lord Chamberlain's notice. Oh, it's over here, sir. Oh, isn't this smashing-looking envelope? Yes, it is rather impressive, isn't it? Would you like to see it? Yes. Yeah. He didn't murder his Sarah, because I'm here. Well? As you say, the ink's pure ultramarine. Not used at all anymore. Didn't hold up any too well. The watermarks from the Brinkley Mills. Very fine old company. Bombed out during the war and that was the end of that. I'm trying to work out if somebody's playing a practical joke on me. You know, trying to pull my leg. Yes, sir. Could such paper and ink be obtained nowadays? I mean, if, if somebody wanted to play a practical joke. You might find a bit of Brinkley paper stock about, sir. But ultramarine blue? No. I haven't seen any of that in a donkey's age. So there's no doubt that it's genuinely quite old? No doubt whatever, sir. But how is it possible? Sir? Thank Swing, aren't you? Mr. Lawrence. Oh, I haven't the calls I've had for you, sir. 
Weren't you supposed to be at the Lord Chamberlain's office at two this afternoon for the swearing-in ceremony, sir? Pardon me saying so, sir, but you don't look at all well. Uh, should I phone for the doctor? No. I'm all right. You sure you're all right, sir? He had a pet name for me. Something he used to call me when it was all right between us. It was Ginger. May it please your lordship and gentlemen of the jury, the prisoner in the dock is charged by the Crown with the murder of his wife, Sarah. In closing, let me affirm that justice must never be thwarted by mere legal cleverness. Wait, please. Listen, here is further evidence to be considered. Once that which is right no. can be thwarted... No, wait, stop. Wait, that please. Which is merely clever... Listen to the me. Light please, by which please, we listen to me. ...begin to lose their wait. brightness. Here the is further evidence is to be hands. considered. I have fulfilled my responsibility. Your responsibility was to talk about that woman. It might have been his wife. The handwriting was the same. I didn't do no. it. No. I didn't Wait. do it. I didn't do it. I know you do didn't. Do you find the prisoner guilty or I not guilty? I have further evidence. Guilty. And wait! Do so you find the prisoner Frank Malone No, guilty wait, or wait. Please wait. You've not considered all the evidence. We should have continued to search for the woman. The trial could have been delayed. Frank Malone, you have been found No, my lord, the... wait, wait, please wait, listen to me. I should have told you about the woman's visit. It was my duty. And there you'll be hanged by the neck. No, wait, wait, Until you please, are wait, I implore you to wait. Do it. Do you find the prisoner Stop. guilty do it. or not guilty? Guilty. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. And may the Lord have mercy upon my soul. I didn't do it. Frank Malone, I didn't do it. We do I didn't do it. Is the verdict of you all? I didn't it do is. it. And may the Lord have mercy on my soul. Lord, have mercy on my soul. And may the Lord have mercy on my soul. The next morning, they found him right here. His hair had turned white overnight. A madman's fancy or a genuine exercise in the supernatural? Well, perhaps a little of both. We did all the investigating that was possible. The porter and the cleaning woman are both dead. The man from the stationers vaguely recalls something about a visit. But the tailor recalls the scrap of paper quite well and is certain that he threw it into the trash bin. All the rest is speculation, except this. It's a newspaper dated April the 12th, 1924, in which the hanging of Frank Malone is reported in every sorry detail, including this. And as the trap was sprung, the last words Malone spoke were goodbye, Ginger. Is the old man mad? Well, those who are experts in such matters say no, not legally. But that's all they will say. About his story, they simply shrug their shoulders. If you ever come to London, you will certainly visit Hyde Park and Speaker's Corner. 
Mr. Lawrence may still be there. If he is, listen to his impossible confession. Judge for yourself.